let's get started. So, um, just by introduction, I'm Derek Deal. I'm one of your e tutors. So, just in terms of where we are, so in the, learn, in the first learning units, we analyzed the impact of fiscal uh, policy really on a closed economy, meaning there's no exports and imports. Uh, in learning unit five, which was uh, the focus on, on one of the previous sessions, um, we added the foreign sector through um, opening up the goods and financial markets, uh, really meaning that uh, consumers can now choose between domestic and foreign goods, and investors can uh, can also choose between domestic and foreign financial assets. So really opening up the economy, that, that was the next step. And in this learning unit, we really build on uh, from that and focusing more on the goods market in the open economy with specific reference to net exports, that's the NX curve, uh, so net exports and the trade balance. Um, you'll see in the learning unit outcomes what you'll, you'll be able to do at the end of the day is really explain either in words, um, use the model, or by the means of a chain of events, uh, equations or diagrams that really discuss and show the impact of the change in domestic demand on the level of output, uh, input, and the trade balance, importantly, and also, well, the change in foreign demand uh, on the level of output, input, and the trade balance, and depreciation of uh, the currency or depreciation um, on the level of output, input, and the trade balance. So that's, that's what you're supposed to be able to do at the end of the learning unit. So starting to build from the start, um, so some of the things that you need to have a bit of a grip of before starting the um, this learning unit. And uh, I mean, you can read through the true or false questions. I'm going to um, answer them shortly, but maybe just first of all, I'm not going to ask you or do a poll or anything to, to um, make you answer the questions. But uh, first of all, uh, the domestic demand for goods consists of consumption spending, investment spending, and government spending. So the first question, is that true or false? true. So the domestic demand for goods, so the demand for goods in the economy consists of those units. In terms of um, the second question, which you should already know the answer to, um, an increase in autonomous spending increases the equilibrium level of output and income. So is that true or false? That is also true. So in terms of question three, according to the ES relation, there's a negative relationship between interest rates and investment spending. That is also true. So remember, if interest rates are um, lower, that means the hurdle rate to make new investments is lower. So it's easier to make new investments because it costs less to make new investments. And in these investments, an important thing that probably took me too long when I studied economics to realize is that when they talk about investments, some investments in the stock market, it is physical investments, capital expenditure, by companies or by government on infrastructure. So that's when we talk about investment here, that's what we talk about investment spending. So lower interest rates means cheaper to, for companies to make investments in the real economy. Last one, a higher real exchange rate implies real depreciation of the domestic currency. Now, the trick here is, and again, it's something that also probably took me too long when I started economics to realize, is when they talk about a higher real exchange rate. I don't mean the rand goes from 15 rand to 19 rand to the dollar. It's actually the other way around. Um, it, 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 it Because, well, the global economy, you can think of economics as um, really being developed by developed markets. So when they talk about higher rates, you, they think about, well, if you get 19 rand for dollar, if the value of the dollar increases, it means now it's, um, it, well, you know, it's, it's the other way, it's that way around. So uh, then it's 20 rand to the dollar. So that's the way they think about it. So don't think about, if we talk about a higher real exchange rate um, from a South African perspective or from a domestic perspective, it actually means there's an appreciation of the domestic currency. So a higher real exchange rate is not going from 18 to 19. It is the other way around. It, it uh, means a higher real exchange rate is an appreciation. So that one is false. So some important relationships to take note of. Um, well, first of all, the relationship between the domestic level of output, so that's really your, your why, and imports. And first of all, it's important to note that a positive relationship exists between the domestic level of output and imports. That means that as the domestic level of the economy rises, 
So as Y increases, it leads to an increase in imports by both households, so final goods. So think about it, if the economy grows, uh, more people want iPhones, so they will import iPhones. And then firms also, they require intermediate goods, and, uh, intermediate and capital goods. So think about it, um, a mining company, they, uh, as the economy wants to grow, they actually need to import yellow equipment goods because we don't really manufacture it ourselves. It's manufactured much cheaper in other countries. So as Y increases imports, that's IM uh, increases, and graphically you can see it on, on the chart over here. It's a positive relationship that exists. So really the other things to think about, this impacts the multiplier process in the economy uh, since part of domestic spending is now on imported goods. So uh, the multiplier is Im uh, impactful as it used to be before. Do not show what the multipliers that's dealt with in um, one of the pr uh, prior learning units. The import curve, as we said, is upward sloping to reflect, to reflect the positive relationship between um, output and imports. And the slope, even though we haven't indicated the slope on this chart, but the slope is the marginal propensity to import. Now, I mean, I also struggled with all the different marginal propensities to do different things when I started studying economics. But really what you can just think of it is the additional unit of imports for each um, for an uh, increase in Y. So as Y or output increases by 50, we see imports increasing by 20 in this chart or this example that's from the study guide. But that just means the marginal propensity is just that the, the additional, the marginal the additional um, bit that you're getting from the increase in, in the X variable. The important relationships, so in the prior um, unit we dealt with the real exchange rate, um, again as I said a stronger real exchange rate, you should think about this as an appreciation of the RAND, so thinking logically through this uh, it means that uh, the RAND gets stronger, so an increase in the real exchange rate means imports increase and that's really just because it reduces the cost of imports a stronger real rand would reduce the cost of an imported iphone so more people would want to buy an iphone if if you, if you just want to think about it logically and that's that's something if, if there's anything you want to take away from my experience in in economics it's all about understanding what's going on and not just learning it um, like a, a parrot basically in terms of the relationship with exports, now this is the first time we talk about exports, that's denoted by X, it's the opposite of imports. So an increase in the real exchange rate implies that our goods are relatively more expensive than goods produced in the rest of the world. So a more expensive price, so if you think about it in dollars, for our exports will usually result in a decrease in our exports and thus a negative relationship exists. For example, a stronger real rand would make our wine more expensive for consumers sitting in, in the U.S. versus wine that's produced um, either in the Napa Valley or in France. So uh, that, that's the way you need to think about it. So they would rather than buy their own wine or import wine from Europe rather than ours because ours is getting relatively more expensive if the rand strengthens uh, because the flip side of it is the dollar weakens. So, well, relative to the rand. Some other important relationships, um, the relationship between the level of foreign output and exports. So foreign output is denoted as a Y with a little star next to it or asterisk next to it. So remember, if we show that Y with the X next to it, it has nothing to do with the local level of output. It's the output of our trading partners. So a positive relationship exists the level of output of our trading partners and our level of exports. So just as if our output, if South Africa's output increases, we would input more, uh, um, import more. Uh, so too, if the US's GDP grows, they would import more because they, they would then buy more of our goods. So just as, and that's exactly what I'm saying over here, it's because our exports, so let's say our wine exports make up a part of the imports at the end of the day. What's interesting about this chart, because you've got Y on the X axis and X on the Y axis, it seems very confusing at first, but um, because you have Y or the up level of output and income on this axis, this is ours. Note that there's no asterisk next to it. So there's not a positive relationship like what we saw on the 
um, in, in the previous chart. It's just as the level of output of our trading partners increase, our level of exports would increase. So it's really a straight line. It is um, not impacted. Our level of exports is not impacted by our level of output. And it, uh, th that's, I guess, the key point here. It's a positive relationship with the um, output and income of our trading partners and not ours. So it's a horizontal line that increases um, the output of our trading partners increase. So another thing that's important is distinguishing and, and this the difference between the domestic demand for goods and the demand for domestic goods. Now, as you see, it's really just a play on the words for on demand and for. So that's why it gets confusing. But if you just think about it realistically, so the domestic demand for goods curve is the demand that the domestic economy has for all goods. Okay, so that's for all goods. Locally produced goods, imports, it's all goods. The ZZ curve is the demand for domestic goods. So that's the demand for goods produced domestically. So the one is the demand for all goods, the other one produced domestically. Remember, because we can import things now, there's a difference between the two. And the difference, what you'll note here in terms of the curves is that the ZZ curve, so the demand for domestic goods curve has a, a lesser of a slope, so it's a, a flatter line than uh, the DD curve, which is all good, because import is a positive function of Y. So the demand that we've got for our locally produced goods, the uh, proudly South African logo goods, is less uh, has a lesser relationship than the demand for all goods, um, because we also want iPhones and we don't produce them over here. So that's really just what this shows. So for the same change in Y, which is our level of output and income in South Africa, the demand, well, the total demand curve has a positive relationship of 40. So it's also less because we still save some of our income. But in terms of for just for domestic goods, it is less than the 40. So it's only 30. So yeah, you don't have to get confused with the numbers. The numbers are more illustrative and you don't have to learn the numbers, but it's just illustrative of the point. So the first question is really distinguished between the domestic demand for goods and the demand for domestic goods. This is one of your activities in the study guide. Um, I think we just actually went through it. It is literally the demand for domestic goods is, uh, well, our demand for locally produced goods and the domestic demand for goods is the total demand for all goods. Then there's a couple of questions on, and, and these answers, if you don't have to write them down, they are actually in the study guide. So um, just rather follow what I'm saying rather than trying to take notes frantically. Thinking through the questions here, right? So we need to choose the correct options in brackets. The first one is, well, an increase in taxation either increases or decreases the disposable income of a household. So before going on, let's first think about this. So if the government increases taxation, Obviously, it decreases the disposable income of a household, right? Because you'll have less disposable income because you're paying over more to the government. Okay, so we've got it decreases the disposable income of households and consumption spending would, it would also decrease because you've got less disposable income. So consumption spending would decrease due to the taxation. So demand for goods will also decrease because consumption spending decreases due to the increase in taxation that decreased our disposable income. So it's important to sometimes just break these types of questions down and go through, well, logically what makes sense. An increase in government spending, so let's say the government starts spending on infrastructure, what does that do? It would increase the demand for goods because now they've got to buy more cement, they've got to buy more asphalt. Uh, whatever the case is, they've got to pay construction companies that will buy more equipment, um, and that would also then increase the equilibrium level of output and income. Um, there is obviously also a multiplier effect on government spending if if they do spend on the right things. Uh, we'll get into all the practicalities of that, but that is 
what should happen. So it increases the demand for goods and it increases the equilibrium level of output and income. Next one, the change in government spending has a multiply effect on the equilibrium level of output and income. That means the change in the equilibrium output, that's a spelling error, and income is larger. So a multiplier means it would be larger than initial change of government spending because you would expect for each rand of government spending, effectively that multiply effect would make it, uh, depending on exactly what the marginal propensity to consume is, three well, worth three rand or four rand, etc. actual spending. But intuitively, a multiplier should increase, so larger. Some more true and false questions. Well, an increase in the domestic level of output and income um, of output increased level of imports. I mean, we kind of dealt with this earlier. That is true because as your level of output increases, you would also, there's a marginal propensity to um, import, so that would increase imports. Sure, so an increase in the domestic level of output increases consumption spending by households and they will buy more imported goods. This is actually uh, really related to the previous one. That's also true. Um, so an increase yeah, in the domestic level of output would increase consumption spending by households because that there is a positive relationship. An increase in the domestic level of output increases the amount of capital goods required by firms. We also said that is true. So as you increase, think about the mine example, you would need more excavators, you would need more dump trucks, etc. So it, it really also helps to sometimes think about examples in these things rather than just trying to learn. In, um, the, the facts. Increase in the foreign level of output increases imports. Now, this is an interesting one because we haven't actually talked about, well, whether there's a relationship between the foreign level of output and imports. So we did say there's a, a positive relationship between the foreign level of output. So let's say America grows, they would then, uh, they would import more from us. But we would not actually import more from them. So this one does sound a little bit like a trick question because the foreign country would import more. So that's where the trick lies here. But we are talking about our economy. So if you take a step back and think about this, we're talking about our economy. So the answer is actually false because imports are, well, positively linked to the domestic level of output income, not to the foreign level. So th this one might catch you off guard because you see imports, you think about, well, as kind of foreign country, you would import more from us, but we're always talking from our side of the fence. So um, that, that's where, where you, how you need to think about this question. We would not import the other country grows because th there's no relation between what they, how much they grow and what we require from an import perspective. So the next one, a decrease in the real exchange rate decreases imports. This is true. Now, the way you need to think about this again, a decrease in the real exchange rate means a depreciation. So the rand gets weaker. The rand goes from, goes from 14 rand to the dollar to 20 rand to the dollar. And that would mean imports, if we want to import goods from other countries, it's more expensive than before. So we would naturally rather not import um, as much. We would rather look at, well, can we substitute domestically? So, but it would decrease imports. We would import less if the rand weakens. Then a real appreciation in the domestic currency increases imports. So that is the rand gets stronger. We would increase imports because things would be cheaper to import. So we would naturally rather import um, than, than necessarily produce domestically. Or we would just also have, if you want to think about it, if you're buying your iPhone and it costs half the price that it cost before, you would have more uh, money to spend and you might get, I don't know, earbuds or what, what they call this um, with it because it costs the same. So what is the NX curve? Now we're really getting to the nuts and bolts of this um, learning unit. Uh, th there are some things that I won't deal with uh, next week. M one of my colleagues will deal with it uh, really r regarding the martial learner condi uh, condition. So first thinking about, well, combining, remember we showed the IM curve, the imports curve, the positive relationship with Y. So that was the one chart we showed previously. It's this one, IM, and then X, 
the level of exports, which is just uh, the horizontal line with no relation to Y. So really where we start with driving the NX curve, and I think there are a couple of ways to do it, but this one we stand in the study guide and pretty easy, uh, well, I think, to, to look at. You combine those two and net exports really means exports less imports, right? So that, because that would give you the net amount of exports. That's what we're after. NX curve, net exports. So that tells you what's happening with the trade balance. The trade balance is, again, the difference between exports and imports. Exports, less imports. So that's an important thing to remember. Don't switch them around. Think think about it that um, in that way. So exports, less imports. So over here, right, exports of 40, imports of 50 at that level of output of 150Y, right? So you've got 40 less 50 gives us that number, which is a minus 10, right? So 40 less 50 is minus 10. At this number, they're equal to each other, so 40 less 40 is equal to zero. At this number, you've got exports is 40 less imports. At that number is 30, so that would give a plus 10. And those three points, if you draw a line through them, gives you the NX curve. So that's that's really how the NX curve is derived. I mean, you can learn, well, the direction of it is important. Um, it's got a negative relationship with output and income, and that's because as output and imp income increases, you tend to import more, but it doesn't impact your exports. So that's really the, the nuts and the bolts of the NX curve. So again, just because this is very important, exports, less imports. At this level, you start at the export line, which is 40, less 50 gives you negative 10 this level 40 less 40 gives you zero at that level 40 less 30 gives you positive 10 so it has a negative relationship with output and income so that's the first thing here do we have a trade balance the trade balance means exports is equal to imports that is at the point right here in the middle where it is 40 is equal to 40 right that's i think uh, quite self-explanatory. Um, where do we have a trade deficit? So it points to the right of this. We've got a trade deficit because a deficit means we are importing more than what we are exporting. So that is classic for uh, I think South Africa as a whole um, and actually a lot of countries in the world where you import more than what you export um, in, in value. So that is a trade deficit points to the right. So you would see over there, it's where the NX curve is below the zero line over there. You import more than what you export is a trade deficit. The opposite of that is to the left of the line, which is a trade surplus. So that means you um, export more than what you import. Now, this is typical for what China has done for a long time. It's over the last two decades and most years it would have a trade surplus um, because it would actually export more than what it imports. So that is really what we're trying to get at when we talk about the index curve, trade deficits, trade balance and a trade surplus, trade deficit, trade balance and a trade surplus, right? So, so that's really um, the, the index curve explained. Over here, you would see the summary and of key relationship and equations. I think the most important is to be able to actually read and understand what's going on in the relationship. So it's uh, positive relationships if output increases, imports increase, vice versa. Real exchange rate goes up. That means RAND goes stronger. You would import more, vice versa. The relationship between the foreign um, output and our exports, that's shown over there and the relationship between the exchange rate and our exports uh, shown over here. So if the RAND gets too strong, then we'll export less. If the RAND gets too weak on a real basis, then we'll export more. So that's that's really the um, key relationships um, summarized over there. Yeah, it's, it should be quite self-explanatory. So again, here's a practical example of constructing an NX curve. So uh, over here, we don't actually have the curve that we had on the pre 
give you a slight above it um, in the answer. But first of all, they start by saying, and remember, if they ask you this in the exam, they can put any numbers here. So don't just learn the chart like this. Learn how to actually implement it. But if exports are equal to 100 million rand, well, exports are equal to 100 million rand. That's kind of the level they say. And remember, that has no relationship with Y. Then at Y equals 200 million, imports are 50, at 300 million, imports are 100, at 400 million, imports are 150, right? So that's the question, and they'll ask you to construct the NX curve. So the way you go about this is you remember, net exports, exports less imports, that's the key equation. We know that X is equal to 100 always, but at Y is 200, you've got NX is equal to to 100 less 50, so you get the 50 million from over there. So at 200, we say it's 100, which is your exports, less the 50, which is your imports, gives you 50. At 300, uh, you've got NX is 100 less 100, so it's the exports is that 100 less this 100 for imports, that gives you zero, so that's it where you've got your trade balance. And at Y equals 400, Exports is 100, imports is 150, so that gives you negative 50. So that would be the chart over here. You can draw the NX curve here. I don't think they worry too much about the ex having the exact. Uh, so you've got the NX curve over there. At 400Y, you've got minus 50, which is what we said over here. At 300Y, or up to the income, you've got zero, which is that point. And at 200Y, you've got plus 50, which we calculate over there. Um, cool, so that's that's the start of the NX curve. I think there's a bunch of questions now. Um, so true and false questions, right? So an increase in government spending increases the demand for domestic goods. So I want, I want to think a bit kind of logically through this. If, so an increase in government spending increases the demand for domestic goods. So if we think about this, if the government increases their spending, what would they do? They can, I don't know, give grants to people. That's one way of increasing spending. Or the more conventional one is increase infrastructure spending. If I want to build a new bridge in the Eastern Cape, I need cement. I would probably buy the cement locally because it, it's it's low value, good, difficult to transport long distances. So yes, I, that is true. If government spending increases, the demand for domestic goods increase. That's that's the easiest way to think through that question. An increase in government spending leads to an increase in imports. That is actually also true because the government would need to uh, buy some things from abroad, things that they might not be able to procure in South Africa. So if they build the bridge in the Eastern Cape, maybe they can't get steel from the region. It's cheaper to import cheap steel from China, uh, or they need equipment that they can't get in South Africa to, to do that. Or let's say they give grants to people. People might not only buy food, they might go to Sheen and buy some uh, relatively cheap planning, so it does increase import. So that is also true. A change in the equilibrium level of output and income leads to a change um, in in the trade balance, not just either trade balance, a change in the trade balance. That is true because as output and income, remember, if Y increases, your imports increase, but exports do not increase. So if Y increases, so the equilibrium level of output and income increases, you would actually import more goods, so it would change the trade balance because you're not exporting more per se. Uh, that depends on what your trading partners want, but you will be importing more. And the last one, if exports exceeds imports, net exports is less than zero. Now, the easiest way to th think through this, if you don't, know the answer just by looking at the question um, there's various ways of doing this put in your own numbers if exports it exceeds imports net exports is exports less imports right so if exceeds uh, if exports are more than imports should nx be less than zero i mean if you're not a numbers person you, you'll say false because you picked picked it up in in the uh, the way the question is is asked, but if you are a numbers person, you might want to to work this out, put in your own number. So if exports exceeds imports, let's say exports are equal to 10, I mean, you can throw in any number, and imports will are less than that because exports are more than imports. Let's say imports are five, right? 
So exports 10, imports 5, what is net exports? 10 less 5 is equal to 5. 5 is bigger than 0, not smaller than 0. So that is a practical way to actually go around this question. If you don't pick it up just from the language, you can, in a practical way, work this out. Put in any number for exports on, on a piece of paper, deduct a number that is smaller than that for imports, and you'll see that that gives you a number greater than 0, not smaller than 0. So that's, I mean, a different way to approach the question if you don't just pick up the answer from reading it. Um, another thing is to look at is, well, an increase in the demand uh, through government spending. So we actually answered this question over here where we said, um, increasing government spending increases the demand for domestic goods. We said that's true. We said it also leads to an increase in imports. True. But now, remember, in the, in the learning unit outcomes, it's not just about being able to answer true and false questions. You also need to be able to look at graphs, look at the chain of events, etc. Yeah. We now consider an increase in demand through an increase in government spending. So the government wants to build a new bridge in the Eastern Cape. The, uh, so, well, what does this do? This increases the demand for goods and the equilibrium level of output and income, right? So if you think about this, the demand for domestic goods would increase because, well, you now need more cement, which otherwise you wouldn't have had. So what happens to NX? We said NX would change, so trade balance would change. So assuming the original equilibrium is at NX equals zero. So this is just an assumption they made for this question. The trade balance would worsen from there. So we're moving along there. But the reason that happens is we increase the demand for the ZZ the curve, the demand for domestic goods. It increases where it in, uh, intersects that 45 degree line. We move down over there. So you see the increase in output income. That would lead us down the NX curve. If that doesn't sense, hopefully this helps uh, in terms of the, I mean, this is a quick and easy way to kind of turn on the chain of events. So government spending increases, that means domestic demand increases, means output increases because, well, somebody's got to produce the cement for the bridge, but also total output and income increases. The imports increase because we know there's that positive relationship if the level of output output income in increases, you need to import more. Think about the cement producer, they might get their paper bags from somewhere else. And that would lead to net exports worsening because you're not exporting more, but you're importing more because you've now got to import the bags for the cement, right? So NX worsens. So just going through that again, because it might feel very fast if, you, if you're not familiar with um, all the signals. Government spending increases, that means the demand increases, you've got output and income increasing, there's a positive relationship between that and import, and NX worsens. So practical example, Bridge Eastern Cape, they need cement, the local economy grows to well to produce the cement, they need to import paper bags, our net exports decrease, or that trade balance, which is the the point where it is would worsen. So we can go from equilibrium to or trade balance to trade deficit. Remember, we don't always have to start on this line. I mean, maybe the starting point could be somewhere else in, in a different example. But over here, we started on a, at a trade balance because that's the assumption we made over here. The assumption, yeah, it would worsen. I guess that that's the important thing to remember. So an increase in government spending would worsen the, the net exports through this chain of events. Okay. Increases in demand, so what happens if foreign demand increases, right? So we just talked about what happens if domestic demand, so let's say government spending increases. What happens if foreigners want to buy more South African wine, right? So an increase in the level of exports, so foreign demand, shifts the NX curve to the right. Now, this is important to note that it's not just a movement along the curve. So movement along the curve are, well, changes in government spending or investment spending, right? So that's a movement along the curve, which we saw in the previous chart. So that's just the movement along the NX curve. That was a shift in the ZZ curve, but a movement along the NX curve. And it's always important to think about these things. So why is this the case, right? So why is there a complete shift 
in the NX curve. If we think about the net exports, I actually want to go back, I'm going back a lot of slides, um, right? So exports are increasing, the level of exports, because foreigners want more South African wine, so we've got to increase our exports. Imports are still the same, right? So imports are the same, exports are increasing. That mean in this case, exports increase and imports stay the same, right? So let's say exports are 40 over year, imports 50. If exports go up to 50, that means where we calculated the 40 less the 50 was equal to minus 10. If exports go up by 10, that means we've got, so if you imagine this line being drawn over there, that would mean 50 less 50 is equal to zero. So this whole curve would actually move up by 10, if you think about it, because all of a sudden this point would be, uh, this X would be higher, right? It would be over there. So then you would have 50 less 40 is equal to, to 10. This this point would be at 50 again, so you would have 50 less 30 is equal to 20. So this whole curve would move, well, to the right or up, whichever way you want to visualize it for yourself. Um, it either goes up or to the right. It would shift. So the NX curve would, at the end of the day, shift if exports increase, right? What's important about this is what it then means for um, the relationship, or well, what it means for the trade balance. So if we increase the demand for goods, which the increase, well, for uh, the foreign goods, which increase the level of output and income and in turn causes exports to rise, the equilibrium level of output and income would rise. So, well, we, we assume, so, so there's two impacts here. So I think that that's, that's the first thing to note. There's two impacts. So the index curve shifts to the right and or up, whichever way you want to visualize it, but the total level of output and income also increases. So that is also worth noting. So the total level of output and income increases. So we assume that the positive effect of an increase in exports on the trade balance outstrips the negative effect of an increase in imports. So if exports increase, our output increases. We need to produce more wine to um, be able to sell overseas. But if we have to produce more wine to um, because there's more demand for our wine, then we need to import I don't know, more bottles or more cork, uh, whatever the case is. So we're importing more as well. So that is actually negative for um, your net exports, if you think about this. But the, we assume that the increase in exports outstrips that negative effect because um, let's say we, again, produce a bottle of wine the wine, which is the most important thing, gets grown locally. We don't import the wine to export it again. We just import the cork or the cap or the bottle, if you, if you want to think about it that way. So we assume that we, the the total effect of this is still more positive in, for the trade balance than negative, um, if that makes any sense. So think about it that way in terms of what exactly it, it means for the net exports. Questions from Activity 4. So... A couple of um, impacts on net exports. So it's important to think through these, what these impacts are, because um, it, it shows that you actually understand what's happening or what the linkages are between changes in fiscal or monetary policy and um, the end effect on net exports. So first of all, an increase in taxation. What does that do? Well, if they tax us more, there's going to be less demand for goods, consumption is less, um, output and income would be less, that should be um, the net exports uh, would go up because we are importing less. Sorry, that shouldn't be a Y, that should be an X at the end. But um, the net exports would go up if taxation goes up because the impact on the demand for goods would be negative, right? We're going to have less demand for goods there's going to be a lower level of equilibrium output and income, which means we import less. Uh, we still export the same amount, but import less. So net exports uh, would actually increase because we're importing less, exporting the same amount, right? Number two, there's an increase in government spending. What happens? Well, the demand for goods, which is the Z, 
would increase because we're building a bridge in the Eastern Cape, so we need more cement. The equilibrium level of output and income goes up because we need to produce more cement, but we need to import the bags, so import goes up, net exports go down because exports still stay the same. We export the same amount of wine, but uh, we are now importing more paper bags, so unfortunately net exports go down. Now, we haven't dealt with interest rates uh, yet and the impact here. So let's let's think about this now. If interest rates go up, we know there's a negative relationship between investment. So and again, this investment means capital expenditure, not investing in stocks on easy equities. It's it's think about it as capital expenditure. So if interest rates go up, it's more expensive for me to build a new cement plant. So I'm probably not going to invest in a new cement plant unless um, there is sufficient demand for it. But if I think about it, interest rates go up, the marginal project gets cancelled because it's more expensive to finance and build the the project, so investment goes down. If investment goes down, demand for goods goes down, the equilibrium level of output and income goes down because, well, there's less demand for goods. I was going to build this main plant. I'm not going to now because interest rates are high. And then, well, if we're demanding less, we're also importing less because this no longer the new cement plant, we're importing less paper bags. And because exports stay the same, but imports go down, our net exports would increase. So yeah, that's that's really as simple as that. So interest rates up, investment down, demand for goods down, the equilibrium level of output down, which means we will import less net exports go up. So yeah, I think that's that's that from me. I think we are actually quite close to time. Thank you very much. 